it was absolutely mind-blowing. You read the performance figures and you couldn't believe that these, this could be unleashed on an ordinary member of the public. Only thing wrong with that car is that I haven't driven it. Most fun you can have with your clothes on. I love when a jet engine starts. And when you start an F1, that's as pretty much as close as you get to it in a road car. And you can't explain to anyone what an F1 is like to drive, unless you drive one. There's no other car out there which will prepare you for it. I backed it into a concrete wall at about 150 miles an hour in the Suzuka circuit. A very, very embarrassing moment. There are over 59 million people living in the UK, the home of McLaren. They have more than 24 million cars between them. The national speed limit is 70 miles per hour, and the average speed in London is 5 miles per hour. So what were Ron Dennis and his team thinking of when they designed this? The fastest road car on earth. McLaren had had a startlingly successful year in Formula One. You know, we've won everything there is to win this year. What do you think we should do next? And he said, well, let's do the fastest road car in the world. And lo, they called it the McLaren F1. The name actually started as a bit of a joke. It came up as the name F1 because the, the Ferrari F40 had just been born. And uh, I cracked the joke about being 39 steps better than an F40. We all laughed and said, well, go away and think of a better name. But we, we didn't in the end, so it stuck. So, how do you create the fastest road car on Earth? Easy. First, you find an enormous engine. Next, you keep the weight low. To do this, Gordon Murray built the chassis and body entirely from carbon fiber. But it didn't stop there. The engine bay is lined in 24 karat gold. And that's not just a meaningless extravagance. Gold is the best heat reflector in the world, which is why they use gold in the engine bay. The car comes with a fully titanium toolkit, which in itself is an absolute marvel to behold. So you've reached your target weight and you have a huge V12 engine with 627 brake horsepower. You are now ready to break the world record for the fastest road car on earth. All you need to do is find a place with no speed limits and a racing driver. But why this man, Andy Wallace? Possibly something to do with the fact that he's only the only one we could find that was brave enough to drive the car. Everything was fine until I got to around 230 miles an hour, something like that, and the car started to, to weave about a bit and use up quite a lot of road side to side. I could have made the decision to lift off, and I thought, wow, I, maybe it's not so bad if we go a bit quicker. Luckily for me, after about another five miles an hour, everything smoothed out and it was perfect. Great, you've broken the world record. But remember, you built this car in the UK, where driving at 241 miles per hour is 171 miles per hour over the national speed limit. But the McLaren is also the most practical supercar in the world. I know that initially Ron Dennis had thought that maybe it should be a single-seater, but I think most people quickly pointed out that if you're going to have a car like this, you're going to want to show it off to your friends and there's no point showing it off by driving past them. They should be in the car with you. As long as you're not, you haven't got too many friends, you're okay. It is an eminently practical car. However absurd that seems in the context of a million dollar motor car. In fact, I even went shopping in it once. So there you have it, the McLaren F1, the world's ultimate supercar. It is an absolute landmark in road car design. I just can't think of a less compromised Supercar. This has got to be the ultimate car. Well, you would say that, you lucky bastard.